Man Waker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by patrons on Patreon. To find out more or to add your support for as little as a dollar a month, visit patreon.com slash manawaker. Welcome to Manawaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. This week, Gravitational Batraction by Kara Di Girolamo. When you think about the wear virus, you have to think about mass. There's a reason you don't see too many wear elephants around, and not just because elephants don't bite humans all that often. In the early days, before we really understood what was going on, we called everyone wear wolves and wear jaguars, not because they actually got bit by wolves and jaguars, but because people got bit by their pet dog or cat and ended up having generally cat-like or dog-like features, but still kept their 160 pounds or whatever. A cat weighing a buck 60, that's not here kitty kitty. Conservation of mass, you see, it's a thing. For my part, I woke up in the middle of the night one night with something on my face. It was furry in the middle, cold and leathery on the edges, and I screamed as loudly as I could. A very manly scream, of course. The thing took off with some seriously crazy fluttering and scraping against the walls. My dad burst in and threw on the light, and there it was, a bat, flying panicked circles around the ceiling. We ran round with towels over our heads, waving tennis rackets, till I gave it a solid whack. And while I stammered, oh no, I've killed it, I've killed it, my dad wrapped it in a towel and threw it out in the garden. Then he saw the two little bite marks on my head, and we were in the car heading for the hospital. It was almost 2 a.m., and I alternated grumbling and dozing in the ER until they called us in. Apparently, I'd picked up the wear virus somewhere, probably school, and the bat bite had activated it. But hey, still negative for rabies. I yawned as the doctor handed me a horrible, unexpected diseases for dummies fact sheet and wrote out a prescription for the heavy meds. They'd stop me from changing involuntarily on the full moon. Voluntary changing was forbidden, too. If I ever transformed, she warned me, my mass would stay the same, and bat bones are very tiny and delicate. The conjecture was that gravity would turn me into a bloody mess on the ground in seconds flat. This news sucked. The wear virus wasn't all fun and games, but I had a few friends who'd been bitten by normal animals like dogs and cats. One by a goat. We all laughed at him, and they could fool around on the full moon in whatever shape they wanted. They didn't have to take the heavy meds. When news got around about my newly bat status, everyone wanted me to transform. We'll hold you up, Nate, they said. What about doing it on my kid brother's trampoline? That wasn't how gravity worked. I glared at them. But then, Clara asked. I always melted a little around Clara. Shiny, dry, spaghetti straight hair, tipped up nose, gaze full of serious curiosity. She made me want to be my most erudite self. We don't really know what's going to happen, she said. Where bats are rare enough, the doctors are only guessing. I think it would be interesting to test. You could change, and if there's any pain, just change right back. There was a light in her eyes, an eagerness. I'd seen that eagerness dissecting frogs in bio and discussing infection patterns when we played Epidemic. I probably should have picked up on the mad scientist tendencies, but the light was directed at me. My heart flapped its little wings. I still said no, of course. This was my life. At the next full moon party, Big Ralph, my were-goat buddy, plied me with beers and brownies trying to make me feel better about not being allowed to change. After about the third headbutt in the shoulder, really, goats, I'd had enough. All the pity made me angry. They said they were sorry, but I knew they were laughing about how unlucky I was. Clara wouldn't laugh, though. She was interested. I spotted her sitting alone on a couch in the den and weaving slightly. I climbed into her lap. I'm ready, I said, 
and let myself nuzzle into her shoulder. I want to know for sure. Do it, she said, her breath roughening as she set her phone to record video. Do it. I might die, I thought. But that many beers in, death in a cute girl's arms didn't sound totally terrible. I breathed in her scent, closed my eyes, and changed. Darkness. Panic. A scream of sound. I was tangled in something. I was free, swooping, diving. Things were swinging at me. I couldn't think or I was thinking too much. There was movement everywhere. Everything was too loud. It was so loud that I couldn't see. When I came to, I was lying on the floor in the center of the room, beaten and bruised like I had been trampled. Some of my fingers were broken. Blood trickled from my ears. The partygoers huddled against the walls, dish towels and blankets and t-shirts over their heads. Clara was curled into a ball on the floor, arms over her head. Oh God, they're all over me. Oh God, get them out of my hair. A couple girls picked her up and casting me dirty looks helped her out of the house. Big Ralph offered a hoof. Sorry, man, he said, pulling me up. Clouds of bats really aren't a hit at parties. Turns out how the wear virus deals with mass is kind of unpredictable. As expected, I was 160 pounds of bat. The doctor thought I would become one giant fragile dead bat. But instead, I became about 14,000 tiny living bats, each one approximately 5 grams. 14,000 was really too many for a house party. Vids of it were all over the internet. None of the girls at school talked to me for a week. Clara never spoke to me again. On the bright side, being ostracized for committing the worst party foul ever was not as bad as the alternative. Maybe I was an idiot who let a few beers and a cute girl get me to do something that might have killed me, but I wasn't dead. That had to be a score. And there's something amazing about being werebats. My werebuds talk in hushed voices about altered states of consciousness, but none of them had to figure out how to flow with a mind split into 14,000 tiny panicked headspaces. When I change, I become something vast. I'm a living cloud, dense enough to darken the moon and diffuse enough to spread my wings all around the world. It's great. And flying is pretty badass. Human Nate's better off too, because I eat every stinking mosquito I can catch. This has been Gravitational Bat Traction, written by Cara Di Girolamo. For more information about Manawaker Studios' other projects, including books and games, visit manawaker.com, which is also where you should go to learn more about the authors featured on this podcast or to get details about submitting a story. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. Manawaker Studios' director of Dice is Ben Baston. I'm C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at C.B. D-R-O-E-G-E. Thanks for listening. On the next installment of Manawaker Studios' Flash Fiction Podcast, once, when she was ten, a green and yellow swallowtail landed on Papa's fingertip, looking at them with the same wonder they had for it. Keustedve, Papa whispered to the butterfly, what do you see?